Hi, this is Judith Karakshan, Yermanos Brilakis, and this is case 170 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case of an LAD CTO that was crossed using the retrograde approach, followed by treatment of a quadrification using the DK crust technique, using a unique retrograde facilitation for rewiring. The patient had presented with an anterior myocardial infarction three months prior. The LAD was occluded. And then uh, he had a severe disease in the right coronary artery that was successfully standard. He had an ejection fraction of 25%. He subsequently had an MRI that showed an improvement in ejection fraction to 41% with uh, some infarction in the anterior wall, but there was viability in the majority of the anterior wall. As a result, the patient was referred for PCI of the LAD CTO. This is a dual injection. The patient uh, has a proximal LAD with an ambiguous cap. There is a diffusely diseased distal vessel. The length is about 25-30 millimeters. There are septal collaterals from the PDA that were filling the right coronary artery. So what we plan to do here is to start with undergrade wiring if we clarify the ambiguity, followed by retrograde through the septal collaterals with ADR as the last option because there was actually a large diagonal branch. To our surprise, when we inserted a Samurai RC guide wire aiming to wire this Ramos branch for protection, the wire actually went into the course of a vessel which turned out to be the large diagonal branch. So the wire crossed through the occlusion into this large diagonal branch. And after balloon dilation, we have now restoration of flow into this very large diagonal branch. We have now also placed a safety wire into the Ramos branch, but the LAD remains occluded at uh, the takeoff of this diagonal branch. We did multiple attempts to cross into the LAD using various guide wires without success. Um, we used uh, also a dual loom microcatheter, also without success. And then we tried uh, to uh, deliver the intravascular ultrasound catheter to the ramus to clarify the proximal cap for the LAD, but we were unable to deliver it despite predilatation, including with an angioscalp balloon. Again, the IVOS catheter could, not, could just not advance over the ramus or into the diagonal. So after multiple attempts, we decided to switch to the retrograde approach, K-level microcatheter along with the SUO or 3 guide wire. And then that was uh, changed into a Sion Black. And the Sion Black actually went uh, fairly smooth, smoothly through the septal collateral and then made it all the way up to the left anterior descending artery. So that was a great development. And actually, after we delivered the Caravel, we were able to advance um, the Sion Black wire fairly easily into what seems to be into the proximal true lumen, which was confirmed by intravascular ultrasound, showing that the retrograde guide wire was indeed into the true lumen. We then externalized an R350 guide wire after inserting the microcatheter into the guide catheter. And then we tried to wire into the LAD using a dual lumen microcatheter. Here we were into a septal, so we want to advance a guide wire in the distal LAD, but despite multiple attempts, we were unable to do so, likely because of diffuse disease in the left anterior descending artery. Also had some difficulty losing access to the diagonal, but we were able to regain that access. And this is how things look like after predilatation. There is extensive area of dissection in the diagonal branch, there is also some flow going into the LAD, not perfect, but there is some undergrade flow. And the question here is how to treat this. It's technically a quadrification. We have the distal left main that is diseased. We do have the circumflex, then we have the ramus, then we have this branch, which we call the first diagonal, and then the actual LAD. So a quadrification, but the circumflex as well as the ramus don't seem to have significant osteal disease. So we decide to treat this using the double kissing stenting strategy, the DK crash, into those two branches that were diseased, namely the diagonal, which was uh, this meant to be the main vessel, and then the LAD, which um, we decided to make it the side branch. 
So we deployed first a stent into the left arterial descending artery, protruding further back. And then um, after positioning it there, we were able to crush it with a 3.0 millimeter balloon. And then the problem started. We had a very difficult time advancing a guide wire through this stent. So after multiple attempts, we decided to use what we had not abandoned, which was actually the retrograde system. So we had advanced an undergrade wire in the meanwhile, which were used to perform our DK crash. But now we were unable to advance another wire. So instead, we advanced a retrograde guide wire through the stand that was placed into the LAD. We were subsequently able to advance a retrograde Seom Black guide wire through the LAD stand into the undergrade guide catheter. So this is an example of when rewiring for DK crash cannot be performed in the standard undergrade direction, but instead we did the wiring in the retrograde direction through a microcatheter. We did not want to externalize this wire because we knew we were going to have uh, to remove it again. So what we did is the T-pin technique in which uh, we advanced a Corsair microcatheter over the retrograde white wire and that then advanced all the way inside the proximal LED. After doing that, now we have access into the LED and we inserted the standard workhorse guide wire and performed the first kissing balloon dilatation. We do have some stand under expansion. There is some calcium going into the proximal portion of the LED. And this is the angiogram after the first kissing. Once again, there's some area of dissection, but there is some undergrade flow into the LAD. Again, it's very diffuse disease vessel. We then placed uh, the main vessel stand, which was a 3.5 by 34 millimeter stand, all the way from the left main into the diagonal branch. We did the proximal optimization technique with a 3.5 millimeter balloon. And then we had the same problem. We could not advance an undergrade wire into the LAD so that we can do the second kissing balloon inflation. Um, we tried with a retrograde microcatheter. We tried to advance a retrograde wire. We tried to advance an undergrade wire. But once again, we did have a lot of difficulty. Uh, it is unclear whether actually the wire went around uh, or under the stand struts of the LAD stand. Again, multiple attempts here in the caudal view, trying to advance an undergrade wire into the LED. That was unfortunately not successful. Multiple guide wires, multiple microcatheters, including a dual lumen microcatheter. Uh, eventually, after multiple attempts, we gave up. We did balloon inflation only into the main vessel. So that's from the left main into the diagonal branch. And that was the final result. We did have good flow into this very large diagonal branch, but the flow is suboptimal into the LAD. This is a cranial shot. Once again, very good flow into the diagonal branch. The dissection is covered, but the flow in the LAD is suboptimal. We, de we determined uh, that we would not uh, pursue at this point, but bring the patient back, depending on his symptoms, for potentially um, going through the LAD and treating the LAD. So many potential lessons from this case. The first one is what to do for cases with proximal cap ambiguity. In this case, the LAD ostium was hard to determine. We eventually tried to use IVUS that was unsuccessful, but the retrograde approach from the right coronary artery provided the solution. This was a case of a treatment of a quadrification, four branches, LAD, diagonal, ramus, and circumflex. The way we decided to treat it is by performing a two-stand technique because only two of the four vessels were actually involved. Those were the LAD and the diagonal, and we did not perform stenting into the other vessels, although we did advance wire into those vessels, that is the ramus and the circumflex, to protect them in case that there was disruption of undergrade flow. And the third interesting point for this case is the use of the retrograde approach for facilitating rewiring of the stent in the double kissing crush technique. We did have a significant difficulty rewiring. We were eventually able to rewire the crushed stent in the lady, 
by using the retrograde approach to a retrograde guide wire. That worked the first time for the first uh, kissing balloon inflation, but unfortunately, it was not successful the second time when we tried to do the same thing after placement of the main vessel stand. Thank you.